The Sudanese Prime Minister Tom Tabani has returned from the United Nations General Assembly. Tabani has justified concerns about the size of his high-level delegation, saying that he had to pull out all the stops to restore the country's image. Tabani's recent term in office has been characterized by security crises, which have raised concerns from SADC and other international bodies. It's led to SADC sending a contingent standby force and security experts to assist Lesotho restoring rule of law. The Mountain Kingdom has become the naughty child of SADC. Two assassination of army generals in two years, three elections in five years, countless atrocities and gross violation of human rights, all committed by security apparatus. This has deeply troubled the king. It has been such a shameful act. It has turned us into a mockery. Not a single person who knows Lesotho did not inquire about events of that fateful day. Prime Minister Taban has had to reassure the world that he is committed to turning Lesotho's challenges around. But it is not going to be easy. Both these organizations have pledged their support into assisting Lesotho to return to normalcy and have strongly condemned what seems to be a militia in the Lesotho army. There is a long list of recorded but unsolved cases where high-ranking members of the army are implicated but flatly refuse to cooperate with the police. With the security sector making headlines for all the wrong reasons, five members of the Lesotho Defence Force appeared before Magistrate Court here in Maseru, uh, charged with, uh, among others, kidnapping and murder of three men who happened to disappear somewhere in May this year. And since this interview, three more soldiers had been arrested. It's about the, the, the crime that occurred or the incident that occurred at the border gate uh, earlier this year, whereby some members of the army were killed there. So this is in relation to, to that. And the number continued to grow each week. I felt like this is my last day, or oh, my last evening, because it was at night when they got into the club at 10 o'clock in the evening and they started beating people around and I was there, they beat me up, they kicked me and I was, I was badly wounded in my head. But does a country even need an army? At first, the incoming BCP government was somehow a, a very having that hostile approach to the army. So the army became defensive. And realizing that the army was becoming defensive, the BCP government now wanted to work closely with the army and this is when the depoliticization was intensified. And with the, coming, the government that came after that, we began to see the uh, army working very, very close with the governments, therefore deepening the depoliticization. <laughs> We don't really need an army. A country like the Sutu is surrounded by another country which cannot be a threat to it because South Africa could absorb the Sutu if it wanted to. But it won't, I think, in the immediate future. <laughs> um, so it, 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 and, and, and as we know from the 1982 raid when the army didn't do anything um, because they were threatened that their barracks might be bombed, um, uh, that, that in fact the army... You know, the, the only possible uh, neighbouring country is South Africa, and and um, the, the Sudan army has no uh, role to fight South Africa. <laughs> Citizens are equally divided over the role of the army. I don't think uh, the military should be dismissed, or we shouldn't even have the what what you call the military in any country. We should have those brothers and sisters. What has happened? It has hurt us. But what the most important thing is that we should be logic and uh, fix our own things within the country. That's my opinion, as far as I'm concerned. I don't think at this point of time we really need uh, 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 soldiers who 
who, who can combat any country. But uh, I think we need a high security that can detect on IT. The net is quickly closing in on the perpetrators and the reign of terror is beginning to crumble. This might not be as smooth as it looks. Sadak's decision to deploy a standby force to quell any potential resistance will not come cheap. But Tabani seems ready to grab the bull by the horns. We are not going to have this kind of behavior in this country again. It does not matter who starts it. It does not matter who plans it. It does not matter who thinks they profit from it. The people of this country and our leadership are telling the world that enough is enough. In Nigerian, enough is enough. The army size and the modalities for the November 1st deployment is yet to be determined. But maybe it is at times like this that Basutu need to ask a million dollar question. Does Lesotho really need an army? You decide. Rapelang Khatebe, SABC News, Maseru Lesotho.